Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I like to talk a little bit about uh, GPS or actually uh, GNSS and uh, it has to do with uh, navigation networks. Um, I have here the, the GPSDO, it is the yeah, satellite uh, disciplined oscillator and you have them with GPS only, GPS combined with GLONASS and GPS combined with Galileo and maybe you can switch this on in your receiver depending on the type of receiver you have and i'm going to explain you how but first we're going to talk a little bit about the networks a long time ago there was only one gps and it was just called gps but in fact it was from the us and in the beginning it was only used for military purposes and later is what also uh, used for civilians and later also they made it more accurate for civilians so the yeah an encrypted gps was then available uh, for everyone then later in the ussr they thought well what if they switch the encoding back on can we still use it so then the ussr thought okay we also need to make our own system that is also global and they named their system GLONASS. So now we cannot call all the navigations for satellite. We cannot call it anymore GPS because we are actually talking about more systems than one. So then they start to use the name GNSS, which actually means Global Navigation Satellite System. And well, of course, after a few years later, then also the European Union thought, what if the Americans switch it off and what if the USSR switch it off? Then we need our own system. And that system, system is called Galileo. The Baidu for uh, China and Japan has the QZSS, which I think means quasi sanit satellite system. And uh, those are not global, those are uh, local. Well, uh, those three uh, global satellite systems are quite interesting. And especially because you can increase accuracy of your uh, position uh, by using more than one network. And uh, I think a lot of people did test with uh, GPS together with GLONASS or GPS together with uh, Galileo. And even they tested with all three together. And it turned out that the best result is not with all three. It is a bit uh weird i would think but it seems to be the case and if you combine gps and clonas it works the best in uh, in rocky environments like big mountains you get the best result with those two together and in urban areas uh, it's best to use the gps combined with galileo uh, all the three networks use different frequencies but they also overlap certain channels Then if you have one sort of a wide band receiver for GPS, like the u blocks receiver, then you are able to receive all three and even something more because uh, in the past you also had uh, DGPS and it only meant one thing. Well, now there are multiple systems for DGPS and that is differential GPS. Differential GPS means that you use one ground station also and you know that position. So by the result of your multiple satellites and the difference between the actual position of this fixed ground station, you can calculate the error. And with that result, you have even a better position. But you can do that now two ways. Well, differential GPS or DGPS is now actually called GBES. And if you talk about the old, because the old uh, DGPS, there was only one GPS system, just like I explained before. It, it always has been one ground station that you know the exact position of one or more, but it has been a ground station. And that ground station also sends over RF this position. So that means on the receiver side, you also need an RF receiver, not only a satellite receiver. And it always has been DGPS, we almost always meant this.
Now there is a smarter way, and that is called SBUS. And SBUS is also with fixed ground stations, but instead of sending that result over RF, it is sent back to a satellite, a geostationary one, and like your like your satellite TV. It's a satellite that travels with the Earth, so it looks like it is stationary, which it's actually not because the Earth is also moving. But the good thing is you can receive that signal with your same satellite receiver if it is capable of doing that. So that means you don't need an extra RF receiver to use this differential GPS. So that is actually quite cool. So here I have my uh, three GPS DOs, or actually my GNSS DO. <laughs> um, one only is set up for receiving GPS. I bought this one like one and a half year ago. And I just didn't know about all these satellite systems. Uh, after that, I think that was last month, I bought it GPS combined with CLONAS because I thought, okay, if my position is more accurate, then probably my timing is also more accurate, which means that my 10 megahertz, my lab reference, is also more accurate. I'm not sure that is the case because it is all time based. And if your time is not good or your frequency is not good, then there is no way you can determine your frequency, uh, your, your position and, and not sync your frequency. But uh, it just feels better. If the location is more accurate, at least it, it locks in a lot uh, faster. Uh, so you have a quicker fix of your location. And then I thought, okay, if I can have GPS with CLONAS, well, I live in Europe, why not also use the European system? And then I have GPS combined with Galileo and it should work better in urban environments, but my antenna is just in the open right here on my uh, little chimney. I will make a picture of that. And uh, it turned out that uh, all these satellite systems, I will put a channel list also, all the documentations I show, I will put, and also the software I will show later, I will put in one big zip file for you to download if you also like to play with this. As all the frequencies are also different, they also have an overlap. And I'm just using it as standard. These are just four or $5 GPS antennas. It is powered, so it's pre-amplified. And it says here that the frequency is 1575 megahertz and I think the CLONAS is around 1600 so that is like 25 uh, megahertz a difference and the Galileo is also near that that frequency so you can use that all with this one antenna so that is that is great and uh, why I why I was looking at this is uh, when I received this GPS Galileo, the, the, the GPS CLONAS immediately work, no problem. I could see also because I connected to the serial, I have here uh, visual GPS and I can just see it's called uh, NMIA output. It is a certain serial language that puts out all the locations and then with the program you can visualize. And I just saw the output of the GPS and I saw the output of the CLONAS. But when I received this, uh, this uh, GPS Galileo, I only had the output of the GPS. So I thought it is not working. And uh, so I contacted the seller and I said, listen, uh, the hardware looks very similar and I will zoom in on the hardware later. Uh, do you maybe have a program that I can activate this? Because I was thinking in the back of my mind, probably it's all the same, they just do some silly trick. And it turned out they did. And I'm gonna show you what. So uh, let's open all three of them and let's see what is the difference. Okay, I disconnected all my GPS DOs and I never do this. It is always connected, even though I switch off my old workbench always one device is on and that is my GPS DO. So you can see all kind of alarms. Here is a red light, here is a red light. My distribution is a red light. It's all confused. But anyway, let's open it. And as I mentioned before, it looked like when I had a quick look, they, the GPS combined with Galileo and the GPS with Clonus look exactly the same. And that's why I asked the seller, 
is it maybe possible to reprogram it myself because then I don't need to send it back to China. And he, then he sent me a link to, to a software and I need to download and I can actually uh, do that myself. So uh, first have a little uh, better look at the circuit board. I will open these. Well, a first quick look and I will zoom in. These are the same. Clearly not much of a difference here. So uh, let's have a look at the GPS receiver itself. Uh, well, this is the oscillator. Here is some regulator. So that is it. There is not much here on this side of the board. So uh, let's disconnect the display. Take out the board and have a closer look at this. Disconnect the display here as well. Have a look at the boards. Also, this looks fairly similar from the bottom. And yeah, you see the ring of my light. Maybe this is better. I'm not sure. There also is a shadow. And if we have a look here, this, a um, bit more zoom. This, this is the satellite receiver itself. The rest is all electronics to control the the oscillator. This is the satellite receiver. So I will get the microscope and let's have a closer look on that too. Okay, that is a bit of a pity. They took out everything. There is no markings, nothing. It's all grinded off. Let me get the other one. But with the knowledge I have now, this is a U-Blox receiver and that is very nice to know and I show you later why on the computer. Here also no markings whatsoever. So when the hardware is exactly the same, it must be the software. And then we have two types of software. One is called sort of the firmware, it actually runs the device. Uh, to really be a disciplined oscillator. And the second part is the software inside of the GPS receiver or actually the GNSS receiver. And so inside the receiver, you can also switch on and off certain capabilities without changing the software of the device itself because that software is really made for the BG7 TBL. And so the thing is, I saw in the display of the GLONASS, I really see, saw GPS plus GLONASS. I didn't see that for the Galileo. Because apparently at that time it was not available yet. And they just used the, the same software. The only thing they did is switch on and off the capabilities of the receiver, of this u blocks receiver. So uh, let's go back to the computer. I will connect it back and let's play a little bit with the u -blocks configuration software. Well, to connect it to the computer, you need uh, a serial port. And uh, here it is, the serial output of the device. And you can just use a straight through. It is just a, a 9 DB9, male, female, straight through, not null modem. And uh, if you don't have that, you can also use this USB serial converters. And then you need to find out what COM port it is. Uh, you can connect it directly. Or of course, you have some more length if you put this cable in between. I still have on my Dell um, a real serial port, so I will be using that. It is already connected here. I'm waiting for lock. And then I get my screen recorder. Okay, well, we are on the computer and we will be using a few pieces of software. I have here the Visual GPS, which is the latest version. I will also add that in the zip. Here is an older version. It is a very old version. These programs work great for just GPS. So this is also freeware. It's very old, unsupported, uh, but it does work. As you can see, it displays here all the satellites, but this is just 
old only GPS then you have a little bit of newer just showing these because it's available and uh, you can see here also the satellites that are available and here you see the NMEA string and you can see here if you look well enough you see GPG and you see GA GA and the GA is Galileo but it doesn't show here so this is also old I'm not sure this one is still uh, supported and the latest one I will put that in the zip that is uh, visible GPS that's this one yes you can see my location and here you can see it is also receiving VAS and VAS is one of the S bus one of the D GPS versions uh, all the continents have their own also I will show you some pictures of that too it is not receiving it right now but at least it can see it is switched on then I have another piece of software that can show all the standards and I think that has to do with the NMEA version 4 and the NMEA version 4.10 because Galileo is only in the 4.10 um, I think there is already 4.11 available but my uBlox uh, does not support it so this software is cool because I need to connect it here I select my COM port in the past it always been 4800 but now it's uh, 9600 so if we connect it we can see the same string and here it's cool here you can see the blue ones is GPS so all these satellites from the GPS navigation we can see and here you can see now it appears suddenly because this software does support it we also see the Galileo the Galileo is green right here so that's cool and as you can see we are now really really good reception we are now in five centimeters seven so we are below 10 centimeters right now so this is super super precise but it is open view now as you can see so that is how we can check uh, which satellites we receive by just uh, decoding this whole and me uh, string now we go back or now we go back now we go to have a look at the configuration software that is called uCenter and this is from the uBlox company I think it is Swiss and apparently they are very popular that I put it in all these uh, Chinese GPS uh, devices and well, it, this looks a bit messy but here you can see the signal in history and here you can see the signal that is received and even with the channels um, but that is not why we have this we are gonna look into the configuration how we add extra satellite systems well we go to the view then we go to configuration view uh, this is configuration 9 view but uh, I don't have generation 9 I think my uBlox is still 8 so I need to do it with this here we have a lot of configurations and yeah you can go through all of them but it is a bit uh, much so if we want to add an extra network we go here to the GNSS config and as you can see it is all configurable but it is not enabled the only thing that is now enabled that is GPS this is SBAS this is the G GPS version satellite based and the Galileo is switched on here we see the Baidu which is the Chinese system this is the IMS this is I think this is in-house Japanese and this is so this is I think maybe this is some sort of SPAS for for Japan but this is specially made for in-house and then you have the QZSS it is the quasi it satellite system that is also Japan uh, we can switch this on but as I said before it's not global so it makes no sense and of course we have the GLONASS so what could be cool just as an experiment just to also switch on the GLONASS so let's do that so I switch that on and I like to see also if the S bus is working then so save 
then if you also it will restart and you see a lot more satellites are coming and here you see the Russian flag or the USSR and European flags so that means now all the three systems are now switched on but as I said before it is not necessarily makes it better okay after reboot I also want that it will do this setting so I also go here to config I select all devices it is sent to flash to EEPROM to everywhere and I say send so after the power cycle it will still be recorded so what does that look like because this is a bit messy you see so much information for me this is too much so I go back to my other program here and I will connect and let's see what happens now we see it is all switched on so I shouldn't have even needed to buy another device because I could just switch it on if I knew this so if you have a device like this or you know it as a U-Box or you just you can just try it because if it is not then it just doesn't work and uh, so here you see the blue one the GPS is switched on the darker blue here is the GLONASS and here we have the European Galileo so and uh, the, the DGPS or the S bus is still not working I see because I don't see here it still says 3D and yesterday I had it that it also said here that it had uh, a fix on the DGPS so uh, I will wait for that there is another thing I forgot to tell you and I found that out later that was exactly why my satellite receiver was not working correctly is for Galileo because that is one of the latest system it is not in all the NMIAS uh, versions still so standard these U-Block receivers especially when it's a little bit older it is set to version 4.0 4 and if we go back to the configuration right here I'll just go back to the same here we can fight our satellites and what we enable and not but here down 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 we have the NMIA and that is the protocol that it uses to export to the serial and the problem is this one was set to version 4 and version 4 is an older version and for Galileo I needed to switch it to 4.10 I tried to do 4.11 because I thought the ah, latest version is also good but if I store it now you see it doesn't work it goes back to version 4 and you see here that uh, that immediately it disappears the Galileo so we need to set this to 4.10 that is an extra I've, I forgot and bloop here it's back okay somehow the DGPS or the S bus today is not working I don't know why um, it is still in uh, position fixed 3d so it has been locked but somehow it doesn't uh, get any output yesterday it was uh, working uh, but it is uh, switched on uh, now I'm also wondering this one I bought one and a half year ago and it should only be capable of doing uh, GPS uh, but if you look at this picture you can see the board is exactly the same so uh, let's connect this to the computer let's see if we can do the same trick okay I have connected now my uh, old GP it is on the desk even the antenna is on the desk but it seems to receive something and uh, let's go to the uBlock software okay and MIA output is working yes we don't receive that much satellites but of course the antenna is here on my desk uh, let's see if we go to config that we can do this that would be super cool yeah that seems to be working oh here you can even switch on and off the power to the antenna or not okay but uh, let's go to the ah here it is only GPS is switched on ah that would be great this thing is is one and a half years old that would be cool S bus Galileo 
and glow nice the rest is does make sense does not make sense yes it does accept it it does accept it okay still i don't see the output but of course that is because the NVIDIA should be switched to 4.1 let me do that now yes i see here one glow noise can we do 411 maybe probably also not because it's the same uh, u blocks yeah. mm, 410 save okay then save it to the config yes yes send okay we go back to that other program that was uh, connect yes here we go okay let me put the antenna outside okay i moved now the antenna outside and uh, well it's still not optimal uh, because the antenna really needs to have a clear view uh, to the satellites it's now just on my on my roof um, but as you can see it is receiving all the satellites so this old satellite receiver well old one and a half years old can just receive everything and i think yours can do too this is amazing the antenna is just here on my desk and it even now it's working with a gps mode as i explain so the position even though the antenna is inside is very very good i am surprised and this is my old old gps wow that was great my old gps do is now uh, a gnss do and it is receiving multiple uh, satellite uh, systems and so it's just upgraded the only thing is now in the back of my mind why i bought three different systems while i can just reprogram it but i didn't know it by then so uh, yeah i will put all the software that i used in a big zip file and you can try to adjust yours too and even though it doesn't necessarily um, make the disciplined oscillator better it has a much better fix which will improve of course uh, also that uh, now i have a very poor antenna position because my roof is like this uh, so it doesn't have a clear view to the sky from all directions but still it is locked and with gps only that was not possible so you will get a better signal so thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time